Good evening. Good evening, what Sharma ji. What, what time to start? Yeah, another two minutes. Okay, okay. I, was, I, 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 I was late. <laughs> oh, uh, doctor, uh, the controller came in time. We are just waiting for Indian style, you know, few minutes oh, this way. <laughs> in, in Assam, it is, it is called Lahela Hai. Yes, 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 yes. Excellent. So I, I told uh, six five. So I think around six five now. I think uh, we should be able to start now, right? Yes. So uh, Ms. Anita can give a bus to the controller uh, a message so that you know we can begin. Yes, sir. Yeah, I am live. So Dr. Pandit will be starting now. We were also joined by our Bar Council of India, Vice Chairman, Mr. Rupa Sharma has joined. You know, he was keen, he joined today, right. So I leave the floor to the anchor. Thank you, sir. A very warm evening to one and all present today. I, Ms. Anita Singh, Assistant Professor of Law, Hidayatullah National Law University, welcome you all to this virtual dais of the inaugural ceremony of HNLU's Research Center for Intellectual Property, Innovation and Technology and the XRK program on In Conversation. We are blessed to have amongst us today our chief guest, Professor Dr. Unnat P. Pandit, Controller General of Patents, Design and Trademark, who would be virtually inaugurating the HNLU Center for Intellectual Property, Innovation and Technology, and will subsequently converse with our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Sir, Professor Dr. V.C. Vivekanandan, Sir, on certain pertinent and contemporary aspects of IP law and his journey into this field. May I now invite Professor Dr. Uday Shankar to deliver the welcome address. Dr. Shankar, a seasoned academician, has teaching and research experience of over 18 years and has worked at the Rajiv Gandhi School of IP Law at IIT Kharagpur and has thereafter recently joined HNLU in 2021 as a registrar. Sir, may I now invite you to deliver the welcome address. Thank you, Professor Anita. And good evening to all, one and all. Greetings from Hidayatullah National Law University. World celebrates uh, 26th April to honor innovation, creativity, and social cause. IP Day of this year focuses on IP and youth innovating for a better future. The idea of the theme is to create an ecosystem to encourage young inventors, creators, and entrepreneurs to use the strength of intellectual property for scaling up income and generating employment opportunity, which is backbone for nation building. And on this note, I take privilege in introducing our chief guest, Professor Unnat P. Pandit, Controller General, Patents, Designs, and Trademarks. I also welcome Mr. Sarma, for joining this uh, program. Professor Unnath has distinction of being appointed as a controller general from academia. He is accomplished educator and was associated with intellectual properties management cell of prestigious Jawaharlal Nehru University. He is also having a rich experience from the industry. He was head of IP sale at Cadillac Pharmaceuticals. He also served at Dr. Reddy's lab. His contribution as a part of think tank group in different uh, think tank group formed by the government is well known to everyone associated with IP research and study in this country. His incredible research in the area of innovation management, IPR management, technology evaluation and other areas is widely referred. With all humility at my disposal, I welcome Professor Unnath Pandit on behalf of HNLU fraternity. On the eve of World IP Day, Sir is going to inaugurate the Center for Intellectual Property Innovation and Technology. Sir, welcoming you again on behalf of all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sir. On the eve of the World Intellectual Property Day 2022, 
HNLU embarks on a formal journey towards advancing research and scholarship on the intersection of intellectual property, innovation, and technology, aligning with this year's World IP Day theme of focusing on IP and youth, innovating for a better future. Today, we are privileged to have Dr. Unnath P. Pandit, Controller General of Patents, Design, and Trademark, who would be inaugurating the Center for Intellectual Property, Innovation, and Technology at HNLU on this virtual forum. It, it is really a matter of privilege that uh, uh, Hidayatullah National Law University is uh, establishing Center for Intellectual Property, Innovation, and Technology. And nothing better can be on the eve of a World Intellectual Property Day, uh, the establishment of a, such a center. I congratulate uh, Professor Vivekananda, Vice Chancellor of Hidayatullah National Law University, and the entire team for taking this initiative to establish such a uh, center which can benefit to the entire ecosystem and the community. So once again, I congratulate everyone. Thank you, sir. May I now invite Professor Garima Panwar, as Assistant Professor of Law at HNLU, to introduce the center. Thank you, ma'am. A very good evening to all. HNLU is acknowledged as a pioneer institute in Central India, and which has made its mark in various fields of law, especially in sector of IT. Needless to mention, the two major major initiatives like MOU with the Think we wherein we are rendering IP services to the Bustle district uh, initiatives and startups and also the CG Learn initiative. We can see the comprehensive leadership of uh, HNLU specifically for promoting IPR with the same dedication and zeal. The Center for Intellectual Property, Innovation and Technology, also called as CIIT, aims to play a pivotal role for capacity building of stakeholders in the field of law management technology and science and also to catalyze the efforts of innovation and monetization to benefit of the stakeholders the center which is being established today it aims to develop research teaching and advocacy in intellectual property rights which will have focus on the geographical strength of manufacturing mining and traditional knowledge for the appropriate outcome of policy practice of IPR. The center will also undertake the contemporary research capacity in the field of IP policy practice and also contribute with the state and the central government for appropriate IP dissemination and propagation and also serve as a nodal center of IP transactional issues. Importantly, the university aims to provide through this center all kinds of aid and assistance through collaborative efforts to tribal and indigenous population of state of Chhattisgarh in the field of traditional knowledge for the betterment of their livelihood and the recognition of their cultural heritage. Thus, we are hopeful that through this center, HNLU helps in capacity building mission and we will be able to contribute towards the human and economic resources and also towards expansion of intellectual property. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Karima. HNLU has at its helm a renowned academician and administrator, Professor Dr. V.C. Vivekanandan, as our Honorable Vice Chancellor. Professor Vivekanandan has three decades of teaching and research experience in legal education, particularly IP and Internet law, and has served at NLS Bangalore, Nalsar University of Law, Hyderabad, and was also the dean at the Rajiv Gandhi School of IP Law at IIT Kharagpur and was also the founding dean of the School of Law at Bennett University at Greater Noida. Sir, I now invite you to address the gathering and deliver your opening remarks. Thank you. Respected chief guest of the function today, Dr. Unnat P. Pandit, Controller General of Office of Patents, Trademark, Designs and GI. Sri Apur Sharma, Vice Chairman of Bar Council of India and a very long time friend and uh, well wisher of mine for jo joining today. Professor Uday Shankar, Registrar of HNLU, yeah, a pers a professor whom I associated for more than a decade and has done some wonderful work on Constitution and IP. A book which he did was very interesting uh, perspective, which I know. 
and uh, it's fit that not just as a registrar, as a subject expert is here. I have with me uh, Ms. Garima Panwar, a lead IP faculty of HNLU, and uh, very interestingly, she is uh, she was my uh, LLM scholar in Nalshar and now a respected colleague. And I'm sure that all my students at a point of time become my gurus. So in that case, I would even include Dr. Pandit, who first was uh, whom I met him in Nalsar Proximate Education way back in 2007, I think, when he joined from Dr. Eddie's lab uh, uh, to do the diploma in patents law. In fact, I used to joke those days to Mr. Prasad of Reddy's lab. Thanks to uh, Reddy's lab, our course is running because we used to get uh, quite a lot of people from Reddy's lab to come and join our course. So it's a very interesting and exciting day for me today, even though I have to confess that with our other busy schedule of exam and other helter skelter, we were almost uh, became an observer than doing something on IP day. And it was a uh, last minute in a sense. I I thought I should really pull up something, and then uh, my I would say that you call it my creative thought or innovative thought. I tapped Dr. Pandit, and uh, I was pretty sure that he will accept for the long association uh, of uh, Analsar and IP. So I invited him. So I'm very glad he's here today. If I tell in few minutes, uh, my own journey into IP was very simple. That uh, like any other teacher in National Law School, Bangalore. We are only interested to teach constitutional law and administrative law way back in the 90s. Intellectual property law is like punishment posting for police in housing board or something like that. So nobody goes near that. I was forced by Dr. NL Mitra, who was a director of a project which they have undertaken with the government of India, which has to do a website content creation for IP. Since the money we took, like every other university, till the time is nearing, we are not done. So he found me loitering here and there with one laptop. So he presumed anybody who knows how to do laptop must be knowing innovation. So he asked me to do that. I tried to resist, but he insisted I should do that. So grudgingly, being an assistant professor, you don't have much choice at times in universities. I got involved into intellectual property rights, which opened the world for me very differently. And then when I was invited as a visitor to United States by the State Department, there I realized one thing that intellectual property in other parts of the world is somewhere. And sooner or later, we are going to move to a different regime because 1995 is signed World Trade Organization and TRIPS is part of the reality, whereas our capacity building within the country was non-existent. And so one other thing I returned back from 2000 then I tried to launch these courses in NLS Bangalore, but somewhere it did not take off. Professor Ranbir Singh, who was a kind of a friend, guide, and mentor, asked me to come to Nalsa and say start. So it was an interesting journey because the target we thought was not lawyers. We wanted science technology people to be part of this business. And lawyers can always join the fun. And we thought lawyers are too shrewd. Unless there is some clients, they don't uh, sometimes go towards an area. So we decided to do IPR and we, I had a overwhelming level of scientists, technologists joining with sprinkling of lawyers in 2001. And it was so in a way challenging that I ambitiously started five centers in all over India to do because the name is proximate education, not distance education. We need to go towards the, you know, students or learners. So when I did that in Delhi, I had four professors flying from Hyderabad to teach five students. There are only five students who enrolled in Delhi. On day one, five students came. Day two, it became four students. And we are praying day three, at least one student will be there so that my teachers can teach. So it was depressing in a sense. At that point, probably even in 2000, people did not get what the world is moving and where India has to position itself. So, but thanks to Professor Anbir, who used to tell, doesn't matter even if, if the course is at loss, continue with that. So you won't believe at a point of time within a few years in Delhi, I was trying to get a hall which can accommodate 120 people, which from four to five, it became, you know, such a thing. I had in meetings in ISIL, then I shifted to ILI, things like that. Then it was a very tremendous journey of meeting many, many scientists many people 
who are generally very disciplined, I would say, would quickly get into the skin of the whole intellectual property regime and do. And it was a really, really exciting for me and a band of teachers traveling all over India, five to six centers, almost the centers swelled up to seven centers. And then I would say that I did a bit in my capacity building exercise at that point of time. And it's amazing in 2000, when I say four or five in Delhi, and today where we are, and for that, Dr. Pan, Pandit himself is a standing example that, you know, who gets involved and then could scale up and then, you know, come to one of the highest policy making, uh, you know, uh, position in India and then do that. That, that I consider, uh, I consider I am a more calm and peaceful person today. Then what I would have had a depression 17, 18 years back that where is the uh, world moving and why there is a lukewarm response in India on that. So that note is what I call today. We are waiting on the curtain riser of tomorrow's program. Of course, tomorrow is a very busy day for many of the policy honchos. So we thought we'll have it today evening. And second, I want to just tell a few minutes that history is generally we understand in school as dates names wars you know panipat war panipat war to this war that war world war uh, that is not history in a way silent history is about technological revolution so that from nomadic life to what we are today it's a regime complex i would call it of technology how do you augment technology once which was only the domain of the elite and very few towards every common man having an access towards you know technology that level a very codified jurisprudence of patents or copyright or designs have played a tremendous role in taking technology to the masses because you have on one side creativity which is locked and kept in the olden days more as traditional knowledge not to be shared because you will get a raw deal if you are going to tell what you have and people don't respect you or people don't give you returns. And what the IP jurisprudence throughout this two, three centuries has done is giving you a very clear legal you know, mandate and then also the rigor what is required and then the relief what is required, that's more important. And these are all today what we call, but it's a long journey. If you look at every legal regime which is evolving to expect that everything will be fantastic is wrong it's a tool and then there are people who can misuse people can use it for good things this is where the policy makers are having a tremendous role on the use and abuse of any legal instrument that is where the whole thing the test and challenge of uh, what i call as government i feel as i said Private entrepreneurship dynamism only takes care of the shareholders, whereas a government dynamism takes care of every stakeholder in the world, in the country. Every citizen, every person is a citizen, every person deserves certain level of access to that. That level, our pandemic has also proved many challenges, which I would say that thanks to, uh, you know, India's public policy way of doing things, could really maneuver and get it, which uh, which is something to be emulated for those who sometimes tell government should be hands off on many things. So in that level, the controller general of patents or the government public policy or the many things have played a tremendous role. So I'm quite happy. I'm not going to much talk because as I said, dreams and volumes are written and we are looking at uh, many, many things to happen in the country and all of us are very eager to listen it from the person who is in a seat, I would consider it's a seat which Dr. Pandit is sitting, is a very lonely seat in a way, if I tell it. It's very easy to be a professor sitting in a seat and you know uh, giving very many ideas. But when you want to really act upon and then to do things, there are competing you know, demands and uh, competing things in that the role of uh, the government uh, acted upon by the controller general of patents assumes tremendous importance. And I'm, I'm very happy as the registrar pointed out a person from 
hardcore industry who himself has patents for himself and then moves to uh, a thick academia in the uh, you know capital and then moves to ministry and then works on the policy sometime and then now i would say that he acts the joke normally we say is people who can't act go to teaching people who can't do teaching go to seminar they will tell right but here is a person who can teach who can act and being a controller general so i welcome him on my behalf and leave the floor to the anchor thank you sir it is indeed a matter of great honor and pride to introduce dr unnat pandit controller general of patents design and trademarks to our gathering today Dr. Pandit has served as a program director of Atal Innovation Mission Niti Aayog and has also worked as an officer on special duty to the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. He has been a member of the IPR think tank constituted by the Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion to draft the National IPR Policy of India. Prior to this, he has also worked as the head of IP at Cadilla Pharmaceuticals Limited and also at Dr. Reddy's lab. He regularly conducts professional training courses on IP law and innovation organized by WIPO and other prestigious national and international organizations. As a seasoned academician, Dr. Pandit has been an has been an instrumental part of various universities like the chairperson of the IPM Cell Committee and academic council member of Jawaharlal Nehru University, trustee of Research for Researchers Foundation. Member of the Board of Governance of the University of Jammu and the CV Graman Global University. Dean, Dean, Dean of Atul Bihari Vajpayee School of Management and Entrepreneurship at JNU to name a few. As an administrator, he has also been associated with various capacities for numerous governmental agencies like National Biodiversity Authority. Ministry of Environment and Science and Technology, Forum for Indo Indian Traditional Medicine, Ministry of Ayush, and Ministry of Culture and the MHRD Innovation Cell of AICTE. His publications in various reputed national and international legal journals have been regarded as authoritative readings on the related subjects. Sir, it is indeed an honor to have your august presence amongst us. Without further ado, may I now invite you to share your opening remarks for today's program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anita Ji, for a long introduction. I don't know whether I deserve this. Some factual correction is also required on certain universities. Now I was, because this is the uh, constitutional position uh, under all the IP Act. So I left all those positions. And my major publication is in the medicinal chemistry field, which is still uh, my first love. Uh, I left this in 2005 after my PhD, but still I am active researcher in the medicinal chemistry field. Today also uh, I interacted with few medicinal chemists and then uh, I keep on doing this because I love this. But uh, equally, I love the IP innovation and passionate for this. That's how uh, I keep on switching different roles. But it is indeed privilege for me today because uh, uh, I I am sharing the dais and that is, that is my fortunate that I am with Professor Vivekananda again. He has uh, established this wonderful program which has made the change in this country and has really act as a catalyst to build the entire IP innovation ecosystem. So many scientists, so many legal people have got the advantage of this particular program. And uh, you are very fortunate that he is heading your institution as a vice chancellor. And uh, nothing better than this opportunity which you have. So the students, faculty are really fortunate uh, to have him heading this institution. And uh, as soon as I got the call from him, I was really happy that uh, I am now again getting connected 
uh, reviving or rejuvenating entire classes which we had uh, and wherein he has discussed. Establishment of a center for intellectual property, innovation and technology is need of today's era. We all want that India should uh, be dominating in creating the intellectual property. And we should be uh, a game player, role of a game changer in the IP innovation and technology domain. COVID has really given the opportunity to the young talent for flourishing their creative uh, skills. And uh, uh, rather than we can say that we, on certain things, we were 100% dependent on the Western world or advanced countries. We have indigenized during the tough time itself. Whether it's a PPE kit or whether the technology was not accessible earlier, we uh, got the technology and produce a large scale vaccination and we have made the world's biggest vaccination drive. Everywhere the IP is involved and role of, of IP professional is important. And I think nothing better than establishing the center of intellectual property, innovation and technology, because ultimately you are bridging the entire ecosystem. IP creation is important, but commercialization of IP, which is translating the IP into the commercial practice through innovation and then nothing better than having the futuristic technology. Unless the legal people understand the technology, that's the ideal scenario. And you are at a, at a such a uh, wonderful uh, day on which you are establishing this center of uh, intellectual property, innovation and technology. Idea, putting idea into the action needs the handholding and this center is going to provide you this opportunity to explore, learn all these ideas. And uh, if, if, if I say that uh, simply a legal knowledge is not adequate, simply a technology knowledge is not adequate, equally simply a commercial knowledge is not adequate. Any IP innovation, if we consider legal technology and commerce as the tri-leg table, imagine if one of the leg is weak, what will happen to the intellectual property and the innovation which is placed on the top of this tri-leg table. And that's why learning with the 360 degree approach for building the strong IP innovation and technology ecosystem is the future. And for that future, you are establishing center today. Science, which can give the advanced knowledge, technology, which can give the gainful and useful knowledge to the students and innovation, which can show the vision of achieving the leadership position and you are going to realize this through your center nothing better than this on the eve of a world it day so i am really blessed to uh, participate in this event and uh, i'm sure the students faculty and the researcher are going to make a best use of this center I want the researcher to work on the out of box research problems, which India should be publishing. I, I want a, a number of research reports coming out of it, which can catalyze the policy framework. And Apurva Sharma ji will also agree me with me that we need the legal research, which has the technology support and the commercial handholding which is desperately in need of India. 
a uh, few days back i am i don't know whether uh, you might have read the uh, oped of uh, uh, the new york times 16th april new york times oped you can see save america's patent system we believe that america has the best patent system and they are granting the patent uh, so much but this is a eye opener oped in a new york times and I, I am sure the researcher and the legal students should read this. These kind of uh, uh, problems which exist, but never gets precipitated out. And as a researcher, I think this center will give you the opportunity to carry out such a research. We may work in future also. I have so many lists of being a Academician, I have a problem statement ready with me. Uh, if few researchers would like to work on those problem statements, I, I would be happy to share those problems as well. But yes, country is in need of a IP driven research. IP should not be just within the books of the direct. This is not the IP. The IP is Really, we, need, we want to offer the benefit to the society. The creation of, of IP should have a focus to serve the people of our country. And realization of IP in addressing to their challenges. I think that should be the focus for all of us in next decade or even in the 21st century. We all want that India should become a Vishwaguru, Vishwaguru in knowledge century. This Vishwaguru can happen through the IP innovation and technology. I think that's the best realization of Amrit Mahotsav, which we are celebrating. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your opening remarks. May I now invite Professor Dr. V. C. Vivekanandan and Dr. Pandit for HNLU's XRK program in conversation and would request our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, to initiate the discussion. Thank you very much. As I thought, uh, I think as many of the students and many people are doing their exams must have had many lectures and lectures and lectures. So I thought we thought this program should be not just lecture mode, but a conversation mode. So about getting some macro ideas and views, uh, which I consider from uh, uh, Dr. Pandit taking over as this office and planning to you know uh, unravel in the coming days. So in that context, I have few what I call as a kind of macro themes, which I will ask uh, uh, Professor Pandit and he'll be responding to that and much little later about few questions later that you even uh, audience want some uh, question answer session which i can do that now let me first begin by uh, start starting this point with uh, dr pandit traditionally the office of the controller general of patents trademarks in india has been managed by career officials which means who get promoted in the hierarchy at a little later stage, we witnessed uh, civil servants, of course, with the background of science, which is very, very crucial, were heading it and doing a commendable job. This time around, interestingly, we have a scientist who turned as an academic and then turned as a public policy wonk is leading it. So, Dr. Pandit, how do you see this transition as well as the strategic dimensions in such change? <laughs> uh, this is something which uh, which is indeed uh, a good for academia because uh, academia people uh, generally have a dream but dream dream are not getting realized so i am one of the uh, such academician who has also uh, seen the dream in 2015 uh, 16 while we were framing the policy and uh, certain uh, obvious uh, changes you might have seen which were recommended into the national IP policy. But there are so many things to do uh, 
even as a policy maker or academician which uh, i am fortunate that i can uh, uh, i can give a vision and strategy to this office and uh, honestly uh, time also demands that we think out of box and uh, we also uh, streamline our administrator administration to the futuristic need because if uh, india has to grow as a knowledge economy ip innovation and technology are three key which can enable this entire transition and uh, this transition i am fortunate that i got the opportunity to uh, spearhead this uh, office the predecessors have also done excellent work during their time because uh, we have best utilized the trips uh, provisions uh, enforcing the patent act then also uh, once the patent act enforce the execution and uh, uh, dealing with the nitty gritty in government and internationally so government has well thought uh, about uh, uh, deputing the right people uh, to this position and i'm yet to uh, realize what exactly i can uh, fulfill this dream there are so many expectations a few people have also shared that there are, there are uh, expectation being a scientist being a, a legal person being a, a commercial person so uh, uh, that's again an academician as well so multiple hats i have wear during my entire professional journey and this is a different kind of a cap i can say that uh, which i have wear i am yet to realize what exactly uh, can be delivered it, because it is less than a month i am still understanding the office but yes uh, i have set certain uh, certain parameters for me that this is the most essential thing and in a phase wise manner i am trying to execute certain things which can benefit to the entire community and uh, really as i have shared earlier society should get a benefit of ip creation and the innovation which we are establishing in this country public funded money should utilize for public that's the uh, vision for me thank you dr pandit for answering in a way i would say that when we approached you in a last minute and your acceptance shows in a way that bonding of an academician's mind towards an university i had my doubts with somebody else would have not uh, their fault but would have said some other time but you squeezed your time with your jump pack schedule tomorrow to be part of this university function shows that uh, uh, whatever position you take they cannot remove the professor in you right that's very important second question i would like to put is way back in 2014 when the first uh, round of the nda regime came to power i was part of the mhrd ip chair i remembered in the first brainstorming session uh, with then commerce minister current uh, finance minister honorable uh, minister sita raman convened chair professors towards a brainstorming about a new IP policy. Many of us gave inputs and quickly it rolled out to be the new IP policy. And we are quite happy that uh, you are one of the member of that IP policy think tank when it was shaping it. And uh, currently the justice at, uh, you know, uh, Delhi High Court, you know, uh, Ms. Prabha is also, Singh is also part of that. And it was a very interesting thing of uh, very quickly, the new government could get into the skin of innovation and then try to put the policy. Later on, of course, we had some major initiatives, not within the IP domain, but I call the transactional area of IP, like startup, you know, India, digital India, you know, make in India. Many of them were rolled out of that. If I could see as a person who in, got involved in forming the policy with this support, how do you see the rollout? And... Uh, as kind of uh, milestones which we are progressing. See, uh, I would certainly mention that 
the national ipr policy has given us the opportunity to see the vision for our country in next uh, 15 20 or 50 years uh and that that was a much uh, i can say that catalyzing uh, change which uh, where in more than around uh, 1500 people have shared their uh, views opinions and uh, more than around 350 one to one consultation happened so i still remember uh, the uh, various uh, overseas uh, agencies were also involved into this and uh, as you shared that startup india and the various other initiative one important initiative i would like to mention here is uh, atal innovation mission wherein during the draft report uh, uh, over a discussion this was uh, that this was uh, uh, felt that there is a need and uh, government established this uh, atal innovation mission and we can now see the change what has happened uh, over this uh, few years uh, nowhere in the uh, school going kids innovating something or ideating something on the grassroots problems that that was a dream now it's a reality and this reality has further progressed that they are uh, filing a patent also uh schooling age and filing a patent this is something which is uh, again a dream for the people now they are getting the granted patent as well they are thinking of establishing a startup at the age of uh, 12 13 14 years so this this is the shift which has happened this is the adaptability and respect for the intellectual property and realizing the intellectual property for the betterment of society there are several such examples which we all have seen that students are uh, ideating towards serving the society student are ideating realizing the importance of their ip there are there are even uh, overseas students also i i know few overseas students who have ideated done their summer projects in in us on the problem which can be addressed for indian ecosystem uh, a few group of students of mit have designed a novel double stroke uh, solar submersible pump which can be deployed into the indian ecosystem so all this are a classic case and uh, nothing better than this which which got realized uh, as a fruits of the ip innovation in last few years thank you so i would now move to the uh, one more question which is relating to to an extent you touched upon uh, in your introductory remarks the pandemic and its devastating effect has made uh, many ip policy watchers around the world to revisit uh, certain fundamentals and directions especially the developing and the developed ones regarding crucial access of medicine and related deliverables india proudly is considered the pharmacy of the world and had been done a pioneering balance role of what you call as incentive versus access debate and is even looked as a role model in the world forum of many developing countries and uh, needless to tell we should remember during the very early 2000 under honorable uh, vajpayee ji's government the success we achieved in doha declaration looking at one important aspect which said that as much incentivizing you know uh, medicines etc access is crucial is something which was india's pioneering role as a leader in developing world so how do you see uh, post pandemic about uh, this uh, fine balancing act of access uh, uh, incentive versus access see uh, 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 incentive versus access need the gear change uh, i can see that pandemic has taught us so much of a lesson 
uh, wherein at one point in time we have to wait for few years to get the vaccines. Now it was uh, readily accessible and we, we have done the vaccine diplomacy as well. So the access was ensured. Whether the technology we were having or not, we have adopted, we have facilitated, and India was uh, the country wherein at one point in time we were having a five vaccines accessible. And uh, India produced vaccines were uh, given to the uh, large number of com community. Now we need to change the gear. We need to change the shift. Rather than we adopting the technology and uh, uh, doing the reverse engineering, let's engineer from the scratch. So concept, I, I foresee that India should think IP by design. We need to design the concept. We need to create the IP and ensure that the patentable medicines are offered to the world. This is the new media post Amrit Mahotsav. We need to think about all this strategic lineup which we can make it to the world. And we have truly a uh, strength. I, I, I don't have even a point dot 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 person doubt on the Indian talent. We have a world's best scientific talent. Only the thing we need to challenge, give them a challenge. We need to give them the uh, opportunity. We need to handhold them and streamlining the people. There are so many uh, cancer specialists. How this group of people can work and uh, together towards uh, creating IP on this. We have a diabetes as the greatest problem. Why we are dependent on the Western research? How the Indian research can be offered to the Western world? So that we create IP, we protect IP and we offer them to use our IP and earn the royalty from that. That's the shift which I want to see, I want to foresee and uh, maybe we all will see in next few years that uh, as a uh, strategy professor or as an IP innovation entrepreneurship uh, faculty in JNU, I can see this vision and academicians has this foresight vision to see what is going to happen in near future. So uh, that's what uh, Professor Vivekananda has also seen the vision in 2000 to, as, to run an IP program. And now uh, we can see the fruits in 20 years, how the India has progressed, how many professionals are there. And uh, I am fortunate that he has seen this dream. He has started a proximate education program. I was also part of that. This kind of a vision is required. And I am sure the accessibility of a patented medicines, patented product <coughs> is, <coughs> is the future for India. Can I get one minute? Yes, yes, please. Let me have please, one. please. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, Dr. Pandit, uh, on that views. Now, I would like a uh, little uh, contemporary developments if my query to you is this. The patent regime around the world already has certain established fundamentals and jurisprudence based on case laws. But however, as you said, technology, you know, in a way, the change in technology, I call it, is a constant. With the advent of internet and attendant technologies, there is a huge change in the landscape. Issues of data protection of clinical trial, standard essential patents and issues surrounding it, 
fraud issues patent pool facilitation of compulsory license like that we can list few which we call it as transactional thing post patent protection but of course patent office and the policy as a barrier would you can you just give your views on how to navigate or patent office will play a much enlarged role than traditionally sticking towards getting the patent and stopping with that and then will it have some level of interface with standardization organizations and other things which many are talking today see in my view everything should be backed uh, through a, a proper uh, informed research whether the data protection for clinical trials is required under the indian scenario for the indian uh, medicines standard essential patents and its relevance in indian scenario what exactly is the need maybe a patent pool or the compulsory licensing we we uh, equally receive the compulsory licensing the licensing which is granted in the western world and the licensing which is granted in indian scenario have anybody done the research i think oh, this center which you are establishing all those questions need the india centric research and india centric reports and uh, i foresee that unless we have the india centric research and reports available accessible to us it would be too early for us to explore all this for india because uh, we are into the different ball game all together western world have their plate which is uh, overfilled you have to yet the fill the plate through ip for society and i think that should be the vision for us for exploring any such uh, any such possible options to be enforced in india we need a proper informed research i would submit here on this thank you uh, dr pandit that's very well said two key takeaways one you impressed upon india centric which is 1/7th of the world population i would say right with 1.23 billion it's a world by itself when you say the rest of the world second point you said these are all kind of complex policy issues for patent office it requires empirical data and empirical data you did point out in your earlier questions also centers like this should take it up and then do that law schools may not be using pipettes and bureaus but law schools can are capable of getting comparative data and uh, how far it is doing and where is the fine balance where we can you know what you call benefit the society and also to have an accommodative trade policy we know with the rest of the models in the world that's a interesting takeaway i take it if i go to the next uh, interesting question with academia the ip chairs if you are, you must be knowing was originally established uh, and monitored by mhrd and uh, i was fortunate enough to even head the chair at nalsar university later on at a different uh, context the ministry of commerce took over and it in fact rebooted with new ip policy because i could see the kind of accountability they want how these chairs are working it cannot be just uh, established and forgotten so i could see that how do you see this transition and mandate in one level because you are also a person of academic strong background and also patent office uh, being now part of uh same department and same ministry is much closer than i would say even copyright has moved here so in that context i many of the audience would love to see how the road map will be see uh, i i am i am i'm delighted that uh, sir you asked this question because uh, you have been into the uh, mhrd ipr chair which was then governed by the mhrd now this has uh, taken a shift from mhrd to the uh, dpiit and this was started with dipp then dipp and then now it is with the dpiit so this shift tells us a lot 
because MHRD uh, was earlier governing the copyright, which is again now aligned with DPIID. So the streamlining process is slowly, steadily happening in the country. And I'm proud to say that India is the leading country with so many IPR share in the world. And still this is not enough. We need many more IP chair in the country. We have so much of a research. IP chair's goal is not just the IP awareness and promotion. That, that part uh, various entities are doing. IP chair's goal is to fulfill such a research, which we have foreseen and I have earlier also mentioned in my talk that IP chair can play a catalyzing role in conducting such a research, defining the problems which I have mentioned here, and they have the vision experience. We have so many uh, act which requires an amendment to, to be a competitive or to uh, facilitate the enforcement of the IP. On simply an enforcement, what is the informed research in front of us? I think so many such uh, topics which needs the focused attention and IP chairs are the best people who can focus on this. GI, a country is full of a geographical indication, but still the GI filing is low. We export 1000 crore worth of honey, but on honey, we don't have a GI. Tribal people produce so many things just because they don't have a, a vision to protect their IP or vision to recognize their creation through IP. Who will do this? I think the professionals, students, academicians can catalyze this. And that's why creation of a center of IP innovation and technology you should not just focus on a patent and trademark. Have the informed focus on the other IP as well. We are uh, creating so, so many integrated circuits. Our filing and uh, is very poor. India is conducting a smart India hackathon where more than 10 lakh students have participated in a group. And so many idea on integrated circuit got uh, the vision and uh, ideation on paper and uh, proof of concept got developed. But because they don't, they are not aware, they have not protected their uh, ideas on integrated circuits through uh, the informed IP. That's a really pain for us. And that's why this is the reason why, because we are uh, in GIA uh, Global Innovation Index, we are uh, something below 40, in between 40 to 50. We have a strong potential, I believe, to be among the top 10. And we will see that if we are enabling all this, we will see India into top 10. Thank you, Dr. Pandit. One interesting question, which uh, definitely is a complex one to be answered in this uh, short meeting, but thought to get a little feel from you. In the few, few decades back, they used to tell that uh, the big software maverick Bill Gates walked with a small battered suitcase to IBM office and then tried to sell his software. And so IBM signed a big contract and the contract was simple that he said IBM should take all his software, but he'll be free to sell the software to other hardware companies. Probably the IBM uh, legal launchers would have laughed because other than IBM, there is no computer company in the world. So let him sell wherever he want. So they signed a contract like that. And then rest is history. At a point, it is Microsoft, which is the giant and IBM definitely is smaller at a point. So, or other words, to tell the journey of software 
which was basically considered a simple mathematical algorithm, which has been kept out of patents in the old regime, you know, in section three, has today has transformed with AI, big data, you blockchain, cryptocurrencies are coming. The whole software is no more generally quote unquote an expression, which is under copyright. So there has been steady demand last few decades about moving that towards a patent regime. Of course, not all software can be patent, but India has been uh, traditionally putting that, uh, what you call us, cannot be patented uh, because it is software per se and, uh, and uh, as such, that is what European thing. But do you foresee changes happening yeah, as technology uh, changes the DNA of, soft, of the software or computer program? So just some some insight or your thoughts on it. See, as the technological revolution is happening, we need to keep ourselves updated with the uh, futuristic need as well. So certainly uh, the uh, IP protection, either in the form of a copyright or a patent, on the uh, futuristic uh, technological advancement which is happening will uh, will again offer the best mode for protecting the ip creation so uh, how this is going to be or what is going to be that that technology will decide if it is falling under the ambit of a, a patent then patent uh, um, protection will uh, is also acceptable we have the we have already uh, uh, offered the computer related innovations uh, or inventions which which are protectable one this guideline is not complete one but yes this needs the revision and gradually as soon as we are uh, having such kind of uh, inventions we we have we can update this guidelines as well so that's the uh, quick comment on this but yes we need to think progressively and we need to think in advance like what kind of a claim construction can be allowed in the ai ml blockchain technology and what is the protection how the claims can be enforced these are the bigger challenge than realizing the product on ground and uh, there i think we need to work hard and uh, those challenges are bigger than uh, even designing a product because uh, enforcing those ip will be a big challenge and uh, uh, whether somebody will infringe this or not and how they will infringe this is a too early uh, questions which we can uh, answer but yes i i firmly believe that uh, these are the questions and we collectively need to uh, search the answer for this thank you that's very wonderful and uh, as the time is running short i keep one last question this is more from a little bit of international dimension as uh, it's a clear prediction now emerging large economies we used to call it as BRICS will assure in a new trade landscape in the coming years globally. In such context, uh, the role of India, uh, what role India should play in finding a common ground of IP of convergence among these nation states to create models where away from uh, what you consider as what people say as uh, the Europe centric or US centric models. Uh, any thoughts on that dimension, which I'm sure that every, Indian patent office is also going to play a major role on that. See, every country has their own model, uh, which I think uh, India need to uh, advocate for the IP for society. And we have made our stand clear in United Nations also that challenges are going to be there, but uh, uh, IP for society is the uh, stand which every country will slowly, steadily adopt. Section 3D at one point in time, uh, people were not appreciating uh, India, but now uh, many countries have verbatim adopted this clause. 
and uh, that was the vision which we have seen and now uh, this oped is also uh, uh, advocating that uh, save america's patent system which which again uh, tells the same thing uh, merely uh, doing something which is quite an obvious and doesn't enhance any uh, uh, improved uh, uh, invention it, it this has ever this is encouraging evergreening of ip and this is not truly a competitive and uh, world is becoming a competitive world so where the uh, ip for society is going to be the mantra which in my opinion every country will follow bricks wherein india can also take up this and we beyond BRICS, we have taken up into the United Nations. And with the help of uh, uh, South Africa, we have done this. And so many countries have supported us. So uh, again, uh, uh, developed economy will also realize the importance of IP for society, and they will also come forward. For Thank you, Dr. Pandit. As I come to end of my session here on In Conversation, I am, um, I should not be critiqued by others that I asked all the questions you answered and <laughs> others did not have any questions to ask. Is that a, is that a vice chancellor's privilege? Somebody may say, so I would rather request, uh, uh, Ms. Garima, if there are, of course, we are slightly running late on the time because he, the chief guest was before time and we started a bit late. So I'm pretty sure that there's tremendous amount of work pressure of a very, very important busy day tomorrow. If there are two, three questions, short ones, sharp ones, I think uh, Dr. Pandit will be very happy to answer. Thank you so much, sir. So we have a few questions. The first question is, is by Dr. Vipin, sir. How research in the field of IPR can be collaborated with the researchers in other fields like corporate laws and criminal laws? So what can be the role of this center? Again, uh, Dr. Vipin Kumar, uh, I want you to think out of box. Uh, collaboration within the IP domain is quite obvious. Uh, IPR uh, researchers should collaborate with the technocrat. IPR research researcher should collaborate with the economist. That's the need for future, and I think such collaboration will be honored. National education policy is also encouraging the multidisciplinary research. And what best can be this kind of a collaboration? This can, in true sense, offer the quality output out of your research. And you will learn so many things. You can contribute through your IP knowledge. Somebody else will contribute through their commercial knowledge or technological knowledge. And in my uh, previous submission, I have mentioned clearly that Everybody need to develop the skill of this uh, trial -like table and uh, make sure that how you can safeguard the IP innovation which is placed on the top of the table. Your research is one of such IP and uh, which you need to explore for the betterment of society. Thank you, sir. So we have next question from Oday, uh, sir. So he's asking, how do you visualize the role of office of the controller to achieve the balance between the exclusive rights of the patentee and the principle of inclusiveness as envisaged in the Patent Act, like reflected from the use of the word public more than three dozen times? Or should it be the role of the judiciary? Uh, I think uh, everybody has a, a fair role to play. Only the thing we need to honestly make an attempt uh, how best we can serve to the society. Uh, there might be a certain pendency or administrative hiccups, but we should collectively find uh, the solution for them also. But nothing uh, less than uh, the goal of offering the service level excellence for the betterment of society. That, that should be the mantra for uh, everyone. And if we all play our role uh, appropriately, then uh, things will get streamlined. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
Professor Urvi has a question. Uh, Professor Urvi, if you can unmute yourself. Uh, I'm Uri. I'm also one of the IP faculties here. I would quickly frame my question. So, as VC sir was discussing about the IPR policy, uh, as which were discussed last month, 2015, and there's this new review of IP regime in India also, which is being placed uh, before the parliament. So, I mean, again, it has been discussed that new laws like utility model and trade secret law to be introduced in India. So, where do you see India going uh, with the aspect of any introduction of utility model law or trade secret? law per se see i i again uh, go by research and data i am sorry i am academician more so i will go by a research in which field what should be the clauses uh, which uh, uh, what should be the allowable in the indian interest that research needs uh, the priority trade secret and the utility uh, law mainly on a utility law we we create so many uh, improved innovations but how that can be protected that's the uh, sos need for our country but unfortunately when i scan the literature i don't have adequate research on this we have a data but nobody is working on those, those data Correct, sir. So my and actually my research field is utility model only. So I thought that I'll ask you maybe, you know, that uh, how viable is I, it? I would be uh, happy to see the research outcome which you are bringing. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Thank you. Please do Thank share you, uh, your uh, publication if you have uh, done in this field. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. I will do that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you, sir. So uh, the last question from our student, Himanshi Tiwari. So her question is that in terms of IP protection in, in India, the laws are probably their interpretations are skewed against the weaker section, like indigenous people or farmers. And the discussions are mostly dominated by the professionals who seek IP protection under patent or copyright. So IP protection dominates in India majorly on the economic front and less on the traditional and the cultural front. So how do we envisage a change in this in the times to come? Me, uh, I, I, I prefer to disagree on this because uh, IP, uh, of course, on certain commercial front, definitely the professional people will dominate. But equally, we have created like a TKDL, traditional knowledge digital library where uh, the community who is growing uh, the medicinal plant they equally have their uh, their mode of uh, ip getting uh, digitalized or recorded somewhere we we equally uh, have the uh, protection of uh, geographical indication uh, that's of course how much it is enforced or uh, people are aware about this that's a separate uh, question altogether so many work we need to do we uh, means all academician researcher to inform the uh, grassroots people that you have this ip protect this ip how many gi uh, practice gi professionals are there in country just let's have a count on a patent professional uh, trademark professionals copyright professionals and gi professionals let's take four What's the ratio of growth into this? How many trademark professionals are serving to the society? How many patent professionals are serving to the society? How many GI professionals are serving to the society? Let's take a ratio. This is a classic research which answers all this. Put it, put it, uh, the values, figures, and our open-ended. Uh, status on all this and that's why uh, in uh, in my previous submission wherein i am again and again repeating sorry uh, professor vivekananda but uh, few students are there few researchers are there few faculties are there who are desperate on researching in ip and my vision for all those uh, uh, participants is have the informed research which can benefit to the society. That should be your vision while you are deciding your problem statement. 
and you have excellent center for intellectual property innovation and technology getting established make a best use of this and generate so many reports through this center that would be the best tribute on the eve of a world ip day to this country thank you sir sir if i may ask one more question from professor dr jayaram uh, her question is how far the existing approaches of the regulatory bodies like competition authority has been able to effectively balance the exclusive rights of innovators and entrepreneurs see uh, uh, again this is a case to case basis so we are uh, what we are thinking balancing the exclusive rights of innovators and entrepreneur they are meant for that job only uh, whether we agree disagree their 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 constitutional framework is for balancing on this allowing the competition in this and regulatory body to make sure that uh, they follow the norms now uh, whether with the uh, current scenario when the norms were decided there was certain different conditions when the let's take an example of a national ipr policy it was framed and announced on 12th may 2016 and see the technological advancement happened in india into the artificial intelligence blockchain technology machine learning in pre uh, 2016 it was a emerging field that that's why you may not see any mentioned about uh, what kind of ip framework we need but now we have a question from professor vivekananda on this this is the change and accordingly we need to again keep our policies uh, our guidelines our statutory requirement getting updated on this and this is the continuous process and it will evolve uh, with the time and need for our country thank you dr pandit before i ask the anchor to take over two quick points as you said uh, one point was basically a very wide ranging area of public policy you know uh, which is intrinsic to patent to rights as well as international you could navigate very easily in the conversation which means uh, you have already done your research and homework about what path and what thing to do and the second point is you urge on the point of policy makers as well as uh, officials who are acting require tremendous support from research base and uh, you quite often uh, what you call us Uh, ask the center to do so. I am pretty sure your inaugural of the center, with that uh, particular urge to do things, will be well taken by the faculty who are involved in it and students. And uh, I am pretty sure that uh, we are also one. We are also pitching in for a IP chair, you know, which they asked us to, you know, send a proposal. We have sent it and sure that uh, that will get more connected with uh, uh, with the. industries ministry and of course to your office and i'm pretty sure that uh, uh, your office uh, we will also welcome uh, interns and researchers as you unfold your plans in the future the second la last point which i want to personally tell is that it is not the question of a university function a controller coming and talking i need to personally thank you for a rather four five days notice and somebody accepting it simply shows the affection you had uh, for our earlier what i call as interaction and also the larger thing that uh, one can squeeze time when it comes to academics right rather than any other appointment for that i need to personally thank you uh, and then now i leave to the anchor for the formal you know ending of this program before uh, she ends i would like to quote here guru brahma guru vishnu guru dev maheshwara guru sakshat parabrahma tasmay sri guruve namaha 
आप हमारे गुरु है सर यू हैव ऑल राइट यू हैव टॉट अस एन वी वेर जस्ट अ साइंटिस्ट नाउ वी टर्न इन टू दी आई पी प्रोफेशनल सो यू हैव ऑल राइट फॉर अस यू डोंट नीड टू रिक्वेस्ट यू हैव ऑल राइट टू टेल अस दैट उन्नत यू हैव टू कम दिस इज दी that is kind of which we have with you that is kind of you and your humility but i also tell this is one profession which is very happy when somebody whom you taught achieves greater heights in any other profession they feel seniority you know how somebody goes up but teacher is the only one who always feels that uh, the person who came to them have uh, achieved greater heights which i keep repeating in many forums which is a very true thing that we are mind is filled with joy when you find someone who is getting introduced to subject and then scales up tremendous height that too in your case uh, if playing a crucial policy making role that is very happy uh, more than you know filing patents many people do but and uh, your wide views and uh, your open uh, way of putting things across uh, we are quite happy and uh, i would say that the our interaction today is the first of its kind for a many more many more closer interaction now i leave it to ms anita thank you sir with this we are now invite professor dr vishnu Kun uh, kunarayar dean post graduate studies and research at hnlu to deliver the formal vote of thanks thank you sir thank you so much anita and uh, good evening to everyone it has been really really an honor to uh, participate uh, in this beautiful event in my uh, mother tongue malayalam there is a say um, it's an it's an idiom uh, it says niragudam tulumbilla which can be roughly translated as uh, deep rivers uh, move in silence and by listening to professor uh, dr vinod pandit th i really uh, remember this uh, idiom you know we have been uh, listening to him we have heard his uh, introductory remark and we have uh, seen how he have he has um, uh, answered all the questions from uh, professor vivekanandan sir and uh, the other participants those uh, responses were um, you know shows the quality of the knowledge that he has in the area the depth of the knowledge that he has in the area but but however you know the way he spoke oh, the humility the humbleness it proves that uh, uh, the more people acquire knowledge the uh, the more uh, humble they would become sir on behalf of hnl i would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to you and thank you so much and then um, the next person is professor vivekanandan sir our resource of inspiration and then um, uh, professor uh, uday shankar our pillar of strength and all the other faculty members all the students all the participants thank you all uh, thank you all very much anita thank you sir with this we formally come to the conclusion of today's session uh, we thank you all for your presence today and for this wonderful discussion with the permission of the dignitaries i would now like to close the session yes sir. thank you sharma sharma ji also joined thanks him also for you know taking his time off today i thank him also at this point so thank you dr unath we'll uh, we'll have much more uh, you know interaction and uh, uh, i wish you the best for the most busiest day for you is tomorrow thank you yes <laughs> it has started well and i am sure it will be fulfilling for everyone thank you very much I think uh, I think it's not going to